Zephaniah. Oh, Zephaniah. Isaiah 36, Zephaniah, the 36th book of the Bible. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Hezekiah was a great king, one of the good kings, that Sir All right, that's one of the rulers. And we got a little photograph of him here. There he is. Come back over here to Isaiah 36. Love this new program God's given us. King is a king of Assyria. Now remember, this is also a type of Antichrist. God's angry with Judah. They've sinned against. God is sending the, the enemy. Came uh, uh, a head of king of Assyria came up against all the defense cities of Judah and took them. So he's in Judah. And the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, sent Rabshakeh, and that's one of his men. He's, Rabshakeh is going to be an important figure in this chapter. With, from Lachish to Jerusalem. So, Sennacherib is in Lachish. He's not in Jeru Jerusalem. Unto King Hezekiah and a great army. So, Sennacherib sends Rabshakeh into Jerusalem with, with his Syrian army. And he stood by the conduct of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. Then came, and we just read about the highway in, in the millennium. And this is not the same highway. This is a highway, you know, defeat. Then came forth unto, unto him Elkim, Hilkiah's son, which was over the house. This guy in charge of Hezekiah's house, like Joseph was, Potiphar's house. Shebna described, this is the re, this is would be the, in charge of the, the Bible, the, the words of God. And Joe, Asaph's son, the recorder, guess who's writing what we're reading? <coughs> Excuse me, how would you? Joe's re recording what, what we are reading right now. Now it's not the original, it's a copy. Who's it copied by? The scribe. Ta da! And Rabshaka said unto them, This is the Syrian army. He's got a big mouth, that's what he is. He's an ambassador of Sennacherib. Say ye now to Hezekiah. Now he's not even speaking to the king of Judah. Give this word to Hezekiah. So this is the king's man talking to the king's men. Thus saith the great king. Oh, they, had such, they put such great behind their name. Muhammad Ali was considered the great boxer. There was Catherine the Great. The great. Cyrus, which we'll read in the Bible there, was considered great. There was Frederick the Great. Genghis Khan was considered a great. Ramesses II, the Pharaoh, was considered great. We have Alexander the Great. And we have Peter the Great. We never have Jesus the Great. We don't ever have Paul the Great. No, great is a title given to the world. So when you say, drum roll please, I, I gotta get some sound. I, I, I can add sound. I wish, I'm gonna get a drum, right, drum roll. We have a great pastor. Did you hear that drum roll? We got a great church. We have a great man coming to preach to us. You're following the world. What's the expression? We're not of the world, but we're, uh, no. But when you say you got a great preacher, a great pastor, a great <laughs> church, uh huh. You know, there's, you know, there's only one champion in the Bible. That was the enemy of Israel, Goliath. That's why you hate me, because I kick your images down. I walk up to you in your beliefs, and I go, woohoo! Yes, when I was in junior high, mom took me to judo, and I learned how to sweep and kick the enemy down. Thank you, Lord. So there we go. The great king, the king of Assyria, 
What confidence is this? Whether you trust it. Who are you trusting it? I say, Rapshika, though, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust? And rebellious against me. Well, <clears throat> he's speaking for the mouth of Sennacherib. That's what he's doing. Sennacherib has sent rulers sin as the authority of their rulership, whether it be a president, king, queen, prime minister. When they send a person, you are speaking for me. And that's what Rav is speaking. Now, whether he's got it on paper or rehearsed, lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. Now he's ranking on Egypt. Whereon if a man lean, the staff, that's a holding stick, a cane, used by shepherds, it will go into his hand and pierce it. Pain, suffering. A big splinter. You're trusting in a splinter. You are leaning on a staff that you're going to fall on. Think about if you see a person with a cane, and the cane breaks in half, and they fall over, and they get injured by their cane. That's what he's saying. So is Pharaoh the king of Egypt to all that trust in him. Now, this is not the soul with Hezekiah. He's trusting in God. But, but now, we've got to read this. If thou say to me, <laughs> Rapshika, we trust in the Lord our God, and that's what Hezekiah does, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away? Absolutely not. What Hezekiah has done, he's taken away the altars of the false gods. He's taken away the, the high places of the false god worship. And what Rashika is saying, isn't that God? Isn't that your God? And you know what those high places, and you know what those altars, you know what the false religion, you know what the false worship, you know what paganism does to the world? Well, isn't Easter your holiday? Isn't Christmas the time that Jesus was born? No! We're going to tell people about Jesus and your holidays and your celebrations that you have in your church is telling the world otherwise. Hey, you got the same celebrations as the Catholics. You got the same celebration as the bar. Churches celebrate Valentine's Day yesterday and so do bars. What's the difference? Don't you get mad at me. You tell me what the difference is. And said to Judah and to Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar. Correct. So where is Rabshika? He's standing at the temple, and there's the brazen altar. And he points to it. This is like Jesus saying, upon this rock. Not pointing to Peter, pointing to himself. Right, uh, Rav Shika said, that altar there, Hezekiah said, that's the altar. Correct, 100%. Now, therefore, give pledges. Watch out for churches that have pledges. Let me just tell you that right now. I have heard of churches where they had pledges and the members left the churches and they sent the law after them to get their pledge, even though they became unmembers. Don't ever do pledges in churches. <clears throat> you get a pledge card, put a big black X on it, and that's it. I probably upset some churches. I don't care. I upset all kinds of churches. Would you like names and numbers and references? I pray thee. And that's not the prayer. All right, let's all bow our heads. Okay. To my master, the king of Assyria. 
Give money to Sennac. Give him money and he'll protect. It's protection money. I will give thee 2,000 horses. Ooh, that sounds good, doesn't it? If thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. What's he doing? Write sarcasm in your Bible. You write your Bible. I will give you 2,000 soldiers. Ooh. But will you be able to put men on them? It's sarcasm. You ain't got nobody there at the tent. I mean, look, I already told you the king of Assyria is not because it's already defeated defense cities in Judah. That meant men died. That's sarcasm. Sarcasm is one of my weapons. How will thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants? <clears throat> of the military of Sennacherib, cap, one of his captains, I don't know, who knows how many captains he had. So. Put thy trust, I mean, uh, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen. You know you're gonna go. You're gonna go to Egypt, and you're gonna get help from Egypt. They're not gonna be able to help you at all. And am and am I now come out without the Lord against the land to destroy it? Here we come. We're coming to Jerusalem. Sennacherib's next step is Jerusalem. The Lord said unto me, Go up against the land and destroy it. Probably. I'm not going to give a definite yes, and I'm not going to give a definite no, but God is angry with Judah. And it's a possibility. When Jeremiah is there, and Judah has been completely destroyed and burned and, and sacked by the Bab Babylonian army, the head of the Babylonian army walks up to, ba uh, walks up to Jeremiah and says, the Lord told us to do it, because you, and he tells him to sin. And you know what God did to Jeremiah then? I confirmed your preaching all these years. I had to have that Gentile servant tell you, but all those things you said, Jeremiah? You know what the Lord does with Stiley Hayward? In case you think I'm of the devil? The Lord confirms his word almost daily. If not every three days or at least once a week, the Lord confirms something I say with a study or the reading of the Bible. Then said Elkayim and Sheba <clears throat> and Joad and Rish, unto Rashiba, Rabshika. So here's Israel going to answer Assyria. Speak, I pray you, unto, unto thy servants, us. In the Syrian language, for we understand it. Okay, so hey, they had the knowledge of language. And speak not to us in the Jews' language. Rabshika is talking to them in Hebrew. Listen, these men were not stupid. They knew the languages of the people they, that were around them and the people they were going to conquer. Now let me ask you a question. Of all the years we've been in Afghanistan, does any president of the United States speak the language of Afghanistan? I don't even know what they speak. That's why I said Afghanistan. Of the years that we battled Germany, did the presidents know the language of Germany? Of the years that we fought against uh, Japan, did we know Japanese? Here's a man that is speaking to the enemy in the Hebrew language, which is the language of the enemy of Assyria. In the ears of the people that are on the wall. So the people are on the wall in Jerusalem and they're hearing Sennacherib's men. And the men of Hezekiah is like, we got, we got to stop this. We got to put it in. Let's speak another language. Let's press two for Syria. But Rapshika said, Has my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Yes, he did. Has he not sent me to the men? I mean, listen, 
I'm here for a purpose. I, I don't care what you guys have to say. Has he not sent me to the men that sit on the wall? There they are. Jews, Hebrews. That they may eat their own dung. He's insulting the Jews. That's what he's doing. And drink their own piss with you. <gasps> he's not supposed to say piss. Why not? Is it not a Bible word? Why is it a bad word if it's a, you are saying that God wrote a bad word through the Holy Spirit? Are you accusing God of using filthy language like the Living Bible where it says SOB, that's not God? Now there's words for dung that God doesn't want you to use. That's why he said dung. There's the word piss. There's nothing wrong with it. It's in the Bible. Well, we can't say shack it up. You know, we got to say fornication. We can't say affair. We got to say adultery. We can't say piss. And all the clowns are not in the in the in the circus. They're in seminaries and churches. Then Ratshika stood, must have been sitting, and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language. Man, he and said, "Hear ye the words of the great king." And we're going to repeat what we just read. The great king of Assyria. So now he's saying it louder. So now the ones on the wall can hear what he said. So what Hezekiah is meant, hey, I don't want them to hear it. Hello, you up on the wall, listen to me. And he's going to repeat everything so they on the wall will hear it. Hezekiah's men should like, uh, okay, you said what you said. I go home. Sometimes talking too much. Sometimes, you know what? I, I don't like how you said it, or I don't. There's people, you know, I'm street preaching. If you don't want me to be loud and you don't want me to preach, don't walk by me with your fingers in your ears. Because that's only going to make me louder. And don't think, you know, y'all not be doing that. It's not what Jesus would do. And you're turning people away. That's only going to make me preach longer. The best thing for you to do with styly preaching on the street is just let him preach and he'll shut up. Because I have packed up my stuff. I have been ready to leave and have somebody come up and say something to me. And I've unpacked it all and went for another hour or two. I love preaching said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Hear this great preacher coming to our church. Come to our church and man, we got a great preacher. He's already said that. I know, verily, verily. I repeated it twice. Uh, then thus saith the king. So he is, he is speaking for, he is inspired by the king. Let not Hezekiah deceive you. Now, the men of Hezekiah are speaking for Hezekiah. So he says the words of Hezekiah, the inspiration of Hezekiah for the men that Hezekiah sent. So we have a king that sent the men in the inspiration of the king's mouth, right? Oh, get the drum roll. We have Hezekiah who has sent men for him for the king's mouth, correct? We have a King James authorized 1611 Bible as spent by the authorization of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God Almighty. And when the King James Bible speaks, it's speaking for, of, as, God. Plain and simple. For he shall not be able to deliver you. You're going to lose. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. Uh, forgive my throat. Had a busy weekend preaching. You just see what he just said there? Now that angered God. All right. Don't trust in Egypt. That's okay. 
Well, don't you trust in capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Don't you, don't you say that? Saying the Lord will surely deliver us. Don't you say that. Don't you say that at all. Rashika is getting himself in trouble. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of the city. Now what he's saying is, don't say God's going to protect us, and don't say, you know, the king of Assyria is, is going to not going to come. He's not going to destroy. Don't say God's going to protect you. That's what he's saying. He's opened his mouth too much. Should have just left it with. You notice how he's gone from Egypt to God. <coughs> Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saved the king of Assyria. Hezekiah must have a testimony of serving the Lord. Because, because Rapshik could say, okay, now we're, all right, we're talking about Hezekiah now. Forget about Egypt. As far as Hezekiah, don't you trust in the Lord God. That's the testimony. That Hezekiah has. That is not the testimony of many Christians. Well, look at the Lord working his life. Make an arrangement with me by a present. That's that, that's that token. That's that pledge. And come out to me. Come on out. Come out. Give up the city is what he's saying. Surrender. And eat ye every one of his vine, grapevine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one of the waters of his own cistern. Well, that's a lot better than eating your dung and drinking your piss. You, see, they heard it on the wall. So Rap Sheikah's changed the story. Hey, I, you know, you heard what I said. Well, why don't you come and have some grapes? Have some fig trees, some nice cool water. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land. Right? She can say, I'm coming back. And I'm going to come back with, with the king's army, the Assyrians army. And I ain't going to speak to you. And we're going to take you out in captivity. A land of corn and wine. A land of bread and vineyards. All right. No, you know he's going to do That's a lie. Cause you know you know what the Syrian army will do? They will kill, they'll rape, they'll maim, and they'll destroy the people. And they'll torture them. The Ninevite army was fierce army. And they were fierce to the to the captives they taken. Study it out. Do yourself a favor. Turn off the news and get to the Bible and get into some proper history books before the 1900s. When I buy books, I look for the copyright. Beware, least Hezekiah persuade you, saying, the Lord will deliver us. Uh, Rav Shika, you better shut up. You're speaking for your king, Sennacherib. You're going to get Sennacherib in trouble. And you, Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations delivered his land into the hand of the king of Syria? No. Because our God is unlike any other God. Because our God is the almighty God. Our God is the Jehovah God. And Jesus will be king of kings and lord of lords. He's not the king of kings right now. <laughs> That's right. Someone has to say, oh, you know, Jesus is the king. <laughs> He's not the king. Hezekiah is. They told God, we don't want you as a king. Where are the gods of Haman? Dead. And Arphad? Dead. Where are the gods of the Sipravivian? There are no such gods. And have they delivered the Samaria out of, out of my hand? That's Israel North. No. Israel North is going to captivity by the very army we're talking about right now. Why? 
because Israel North served the other gods, not God. Not one king in Israel North ever did right. Not one. Who are they among the gods of these lands? Nothing. To have delivered their land out of my hand. They can't deliver. Wait till you see the Lord do. That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of thy hand. And now look at that. He's liking God to the other gods. To the loser gods. Rabshika, you better shut up. But they held their peace. That's the people, Israel, Judah. And answer him not a word. For the king's commandment, Hezekiah's commandment, was saying, answer him not. What do you think Americans would have done? If the president of the United States got up and, and I declare you not to say anything. You're not my president. I'm American. I got rights. Yeah, and you're disobeying the, the authority that God put into office. It's nothing more stupid. I've seen a couple places yesterday at the Daytona 500 for people having the rebel flag. Rebel flag. And then you're right by being a rebel. And it's even more funnier when you see Christians with a rebel flag. It's here. Have a good tall glass of sewer water. Then came Elkiah, the son of Hezekiah, that was over the household, and seemed to describe, in charge of the word of God, in charge of everything. And Jonah, the son of Ahab, the recorder. He's writing it all down. To Hezekiah, to the king, with their clothes rent. I mean, they're sad and they're, they're seeking God. It's a time of, God, we're in trouble. You know, this nation is such trouble as it is, and we are in such trouble we are. And this world is in such trouble in the eyes of God, and it is. And men get up in the pulpit and wear their nice suits and ties. You really think that pleases God? We're going to put our best for, for the Lord on Sunday. Yeah. Use car salesmen and politicians wear suits too. And not all preachers are saved. And they wear suits. I heard that if Jesus was here today, he would wear a suit. Whatever suits you. And told him the words of Rapshika. Now, how do you think they told the words of Rapshika to Hezekiah? This is a $10,000 question. How do you think? He, how do you think they came to Hezekiah and said, "I mean, uh, let's see. Uh, I think it was. Do um, you remember what he said? Uh, no, something about horses, wasn't it? Something? Yeah, that was a cruel statement. How, how do you think he? How do you think they brought the word to Hezekiah? Joe, the son of Ahab, the recorder. King, sir. Yes, we got words from Shinnachrib, and he brought it by Rabshika. What were the words, Joe? Pulled out the scroll. How's that? So he's listen as Rashika is 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 talking. Joe is writing and describes Shimna. That's what he said. Yep. Now raise that. That's Right, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Making a list. 